Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pies Nation podcast, where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. I'm Nicholas Sacco, your host again for this week's episode, episode five of season six or episode 151, if you're counting from the beginning. And well, we're approaching round three and we're still yet to get a W, unfortunately, and it's just going from bad to worse as we went down by 15 points to St. Kilda on Thursday night. We see ourselves 0-3 ahead of what's pretty much one of the toughest away trips in the game at the moment, the Lions at the Gabba for Easter Thursday, and we'll see if we can recoup and try to get ourselves back to playing our best. Today, we discuss some honest truths as to why we are the way we are at this rate and why we have been so poor. We continue to feel those frustrations on Ask Pies Nation. I'll tell you what, it's a very popular segment this week. Plus, we'll try to get guess the crowd working for a fourth week. And the VFL report is back, which is perfect timing because joining me in the studio for today's episode, welcome back, Marcus Callahan. Thanks, Nico. A couple of weeks on the sidelines, but back and ready to talk all things Collingwood, albeit a poor, sure? poor performance on the weekend and you have to start to scratch the head a little bit with what we're seeing first two rounds sink uh, sorry the swans and then the giants yes they're going to be good sides this year but there's clearly something up at magpie land mm-hmm. and i don't know if we've diagnosed it just yet but this podcast will clearly illuminate all things that are going wrong and we've got the uh, fans to help us unpack what is happening at the moment. Oh, don't worry. There were plenty of comments coming from all our social media pages. So there's going to be a lot of fan input in this week's episode. That is for sure. Now, after the game on Thursday night, as we like to do, we tend to our WhatsApp group. Did, did you want to go with the I word after what you saw on Thursday night, Marcus? Like yeah, you, we you were, mentioned to we us? Were, we were insipid. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't like busting out that word. And I did not think that after round three, off the back of a flag, that that would even be in my realm for vocabulary but unfortunately it is and we will go into some of the stats as part of our review and start to look at what might be happening some trends that might be forming for this season but nowhere near it Nico. Certainly not Um, and it was pretty evident throughout the second half once again that third quarter really took us out of the game and there were bits and pieces where we were on the improve certainly from what we put up over the first fortnight, but from halftime onwards, we just looked like, again, a totally different side to what we've seen under fly over the last two years. And it is really concerning when it's happened for a third consecutive week. So again, like you said, not not really sure it's one thing that is wrong. There's, there's a whole lot of issues that we need to try and rectify um, before we get to the crux of the season. Because as we know in this competition, if you fall too far behind the eight ball, very hard to try and recover from there. So We'll see what we can do, as you know, the, the, the trusted voices of the Collingwood Football I like Club. that. Absolutely. Let's get to the pie that caught your eye then. Don't know if there would have been too many for great reason, Marcus, but who did you end up leaning towards for, from Thursday night's game? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I would like to give a shout out to Billy Frampton this mm-hmm. week. I th- know that his game has been praised as high up as the coach, but in a side that's really starting to... I guess leave us second guessing what the best back six looks like, at least this early stage of the season. He, for me, is a no-brainer to continue playing as that tall timber and just gives us that little bit of extra height and shape in defence, obviously, likes of Charlie Dean and Jeremy Howe still sort of vying for that, that third tall spot, in my opinion. But he was fantastic. And at times throughout the game where we looked like the Saints might get a pile on, was providing some level of defence for us and has been a very... Uh, unusual start to the year to see goals still being kicked over the last man of the back six. So Billy Framden for me, Nico, but yes, it was difficult. It was difficult to pick one this week. How about yourself? Well, Fly said it was the best game he had seen him play in Collingwood Colours, and I think that was pretty accurate. I mean, he was someone that felt like we could rely upon to take the game on. The marks he were taking, contested or not, he was just willing to go, and unfortunately there weren't many in our back half that we're willing to provide that same run and carry. So great stuff from Billy. I'm glad that he's back in the side and I think he'll be staying in this best 23 for a little while. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, I'm go- I went with Reef McInnes because there was a lot of talk about this mm. spot between him and Ash Johnson. Now I said last week that um, as disappointing as Ash has been over the first fortnight, I wouldn't have mind seeing him have a, a little bit more of a crack, but for, for reasons unknown, obviously um, fly up to, to go with Reef McInnes and I'll tell you what, it was pretty refreshing to see one of our tallest forwards, and not putting my check in this category, of course, but just contest for the ball. I mean, mm. he didn't have to mark every single 
um, inside 50 entry, but he was willing to compete, which I felt stood out a lot from what we'd seen inside Ford 50 over the last couple of weeks. So um, I'm glad McInnes took his chance. He ended up with three goals on the night as well, which is a massive tick. Um, and for me, that says that he stays in this side for the foreseeable future as well. He's where we want to be in terms of what he um, brings to the table inside Ford 50. And I'm just glad that he's taken this opportunity because it's such a hotly contested spot at the moment. And obviously we'll get to the VFL stuff a little bit later, but Ash Johnson probably didn't do too much to suggest he's quickly coming back into the team. So for mm. Reef to come in and, and make the moment his own and, and take those opportunities when he could by um, producing some big marks and kicking some important goals for us, I think we can expect to see a lot more Reef in the seniors. Well, he's getting to spots, wasn't yeah. he? His forward craft and his leading patterns are clearly a bit more developed than Ash's maybe based on his tank and ability to get up the ground. The one thing for me, Nico, is that when I see Reef McInnes flying for a mark on the wing and trying to push up, he's still not at that size where you can rely on him to be against an opposition's mm. defender who's potentially five centimetres taller than him, five kilos heavier. Taking nothing away from his game, I thought he was fantastic in putting his hand up and he deserves another crack. But I was at the game and I just looked at it and I thought to myself, we're just too short for yeah. the ball at the moment. And this is really a Dan McStay problem oh, that we yeah. knew we were going to have. And I think Reef is probably the next best option. But, geez, we've got some things to talk about with our mix of small forwards because it's not just working at the moment quite yet. Well, let's start with the forward line then because it is a massive problem. It is a big concern and there just seems to be no connectivity there um, in, in terms of just watching the game purely on its own. Again, there were a couple of little things that looked okay in the first half, but doesn't help with the inside 50 entries. They were pretty poor as well. But th the big problem I have, Marcus, where is this forward pressure gone? I mean, what's alarming to me is that, so for the first two and a half quarters against Sydney and the entire match against St. Kilda, four tackles mm. inside 50 we produced. Four. One of those coming for that entire game against St. Kilda on Thursday night. That's poor. Mm. In every sense of the word, that's poor. And we prided ourselves on having those tackles inside 50 over the last 24 months with Fly and continuing to put those numbers up, not only does it put more pressure on the forwards, it put more pressure on our midfielders, um, unnecessary pressure might I add, but you're not winning games of football with those numbers on its own. We need to get back to that ferocious mindset, really. Um, you know, where as soon as the ball hits the ground, we've got numbers to the contest and we can apply that pressure. And even if we don't have the ball, we're making our opposition earn every rebound 50 because hopefully we're able to get one back and the pressure can quickly go back inside our forward half. So to me, that forward pressure, which we pride ourselves on so much being not existent, is almost the difference really between winning and losing right now. Yeah. And here we start to get into, I guess, line by line, what mm. is happening throughout this team that's almost infectious at the moment. And I'm not here today to suggest that individual players need to be scapegoated. Or, this is not an individual thing. No, not at all. Not um, highlighted for lack of performance. But what is occurring in my eyes, and I'm sure many others, is a team that doesn't look like they've got their energy or their mindset in the right place. And whether this is a byproduct of having played further into the season last year, I know a lot of people say it's not the case, or is if the team has started with a really difficult fixture and not being able to suit up to the demands of that. I don't know if it's that or something else yet, but either way, when you do see uncharacteristic mistakes from particular players, you start to wonder, is this their ability or is there something else happening above the shoulders that's contributing to some really stuff we haven't seen since mm. COVID days, Nico, no. you know, players standing still forward of the ball and, yep. and not knowing where to lead guys, not um, hustling back. The one that was really frustrating me on the weekend is when two guys run to the mark when we're oh, trying yeah. to keep the ground nice and wide. It does my head in because it means the next guy's now free from the opposition. So there's all these little things that haven't been apparent for the last two years, Nico. They're just starting to creep in and the forward line's definitely um, seeing symptoms of that. Moving to the midfield, mm -hmm. there was a real lack of intent at the contest. And I know you can look at some of the key statistics in the middle that we've been competitive in and particularly stoppage clearances. We even that up this last game after being pretty poor around the ground in the first two games of the season, but they just looked way too reactive. Once again, some of our, our key players, and it's something that didn't really seem to change a la maybe Nick Dacos, but mm -hmm. 
yeah, there's just something else happening there in the middle at the moment. I'm not sure if you see it differently, but the other teams just look way more ready to go out of the middle. And I think it's starting to hurt us. No, you're right. And reactive, I think, is the right word to describe it because the ruck battle, I thought, was pretty even. I reckon we could say we slightly got the upper hand. We had hit outs to advantage. So all those metrics were fine. But again, as soon as the ball hit ground level, the Saints pounced and we were just waiting for them to grab the ball before we started to do anything. And those first three quarters especially, our clearance numbers were down as a result. And the more that starts to happen, again, I'll go back to the pressure of our defense. We had no answers to their quick ball movement in transition first and foremost. But yeah, back to the clearancing, the fundamentals of it, it's just so disappointing that things, and I hate to repeat myself, that we pride ourselves on in the last two years, especially in that midfield, providing those one percenters, just holding the ball up, getting numbers to the contest. It just doesn't make sense as to why it has changed all of a sudden so quickly. And it is really disappointing, especially coming from some of our more experienced players. Are mm. they tired? Are they not? Did they not feel energized enough as they were coming back into the season? So many questions around it. But there's things you can fix quickly. And one of those is our efficiency and our ball use. I felt like, again, it was just, I don't know the best way to describe it, Marcus. It was just terrible decision-making in the end. I don't understand where the thought process comes into. I mean, even simple things, again, looking at, and I don't want to point at individuals, but stuff like Darcy Moore and what he was doing on Thursday night and just deciding to handle it out of the back line. I mean, that's not things we would do. We take the game on, but that's at a whole different level. For sure, for sure. And again, moving to the defensive line, there's clearly some systemic problems as to why we're breaking down and not able to cover their forwards the way that we would in seasons gone by. Nathan Murphy is feeling like that guy that's missing to organise our defence, but I still think that even if he was playing, that's probably not going to fix the problems that we're seeing across the park. So whatever is happening is clearly something that the coaches have probably been trying to diagnose since the first round but that was one instance then we had a second instance and now it's absolutely a trend at play so nothing I don't think any Collingwood supporter could have predicted coming into this season that would be zipping three um, after the first three rounds of football but it's the way in which we're losing at the moment that is really hard to reconcile with it even to the point where I, I at the game on the weekend or last week rather it was just patches of play where you're like, where's the flow? Yeah. Where's the cohesion? Where's the where's the overlap run? And because none of that was coming through, it was just kind of waiting for a mistake to happen. And then that kind of throughout the game transpired to when it was in the middle, the player's almost like, geez, are you going to grab it or am I going to grab it? Or, mm. okay, no, the St Kilda player's going to grab it and then they're going the other way. So it was just clearly a lack of um, understanding over what is required of one another, even if that shows up on paper, they know what to do. It's not translating to behaviours and actions that we're expecting of them. So across the park, um, some huge problems, but certainly, certainly hoping that this week we start to see some sort of change in the right direction. Yeah, and I think we just need to get moving because I've never seen us so stagnant in a long while. I, I have, 2020. Well, I was just about to say, that's, we probably, have. <laughs> that's probably the last time yelling at my in my lounge room oh, and hurts. telling our yeah. forwards to move because... We get the ball and yes, St Kilda might clog up the corridor and that takes us out of using that. But it's as if as soon as that happens, we we just don't know what to do. We're like, we're just stunned. We're standing there and you're begging for Cox and Cameron and my chick to go up and get to to something down the line, give them an option. But nothing seems to be working in that sense or there's just a, a lack of want to actually get to those right spots. Whereas St Kilda, we're just finding the space with ease really and then as soon as they got the ball they were off to the races and there's definitely some commentary as i was alluding to before that teams may have worked out the collingwood game plan mm. and now come up with mechanisms to exploit the way that we like to play mm. but there's fundamentals that still aren't going right and when you can't hit targets yeah with handball, with kick, whatever the case may be, you're giving the opportunity for the opposition to go back and score on you. And that's where we're getting hurt bad at the moment. Like scores from turnovers are really, really bad at Magpie Land right mm-hmm. now. So I again, don't feel like we need to throw the baby out of the bathwater just yet. But if we don't see 
over the next two to three weeks some improvement in these fundamental skill execution problems that are occurring. You can't do much if you don't do that stuff well. That and an effort yep. are the absolute bread and butter of footy. So if it's the easy thing, easiest thing you can do on a football field, and I got taught that from a pretty young age as my uh, peak as an under twelves premiership player. So look even at you, I'm, look at you going now, look mate. At me now, exactly right. I want to ask because a few fans brought up last week in Ask Pies Nation that they felt like Collingwood were try- trialing a new game plan that hasn't quite come off yet. Mm. Now, I can't see it personally. Are you in the same boat? Because oh, to me, it's just more towards the, the line where what have you said previously and what Ross Lyon alluded to in his press conference on Thursday night that um, teams have started to figure us out and we potentially don't have a plan B. Yeah, there's every chance that's the case. And I reckon if... Dan McStay is playing at one end. Nathan Murphy's playing at the other. It goes a long way to improving our organisation in defence, as I was saying, mm. and our structure forward of the ball. But Lockie Schultz still hasn't quite found his mm. spot in the forward line. And I do wonder how much longer Fly can actually trial this mix of sort of four small forwards when one of our biggest problems at the moment is that we're not getting marks down the line to then create forward half pressure yep. and a lot of our turnovers I think are occurring between the arcs wouldn't know the stats on that and we're just yeah really flat footed on turnovers and I think I said at the start of the season our defence would be nice and set Nico um, but Not quite anything but anything but so again once quite, quite a shock quite a surprise that we're still seeing this but your captain really has to start to lead from the front and we saw little bits of that in the first quarter i know das was really trying to get a, mm. a good run on i think he helped set up that first goal with a big long kick out of defense but after that the, the wheels fell off very quickly so it's, it's hard to see those little improvements even though i know the players will be thinking we did a bit better another question for you there's been a bit of talk over the last few days about the lack of impact from our veterans pendlebury has mm. been a little bit quiet side bottom again very poor with his disposal, and that's not something we would usually expect from him. Um, Jeremy Howe being pretty quiet in mm. the back line at the moment. Is is this talk justified, do you feel like? Are they tough conversations we need to be having? Look, again, I don't know where the different intrinsic motivations lie now with some of these guys who are at the end of their career mm. compared to those who are younger. Let's face it, if you've waited over a decade for a flag, which many of our players have, Getting up again at that age isn't easy as big a club legends as they are. So I think that whatever is happening will turn. It's just a case of when. But clearly a key pillar of that is having your senior players leading from the front. And that doesn't just include the leadership group. It's, as you say, Mm. that those guys who have been there, done that, and have really had to ride the bumps of seasons not going away and then trying to turn it around and rah, rah, rah. So clock's ticking, Nico, whatever whatever the case may be. And I don't know how many games Steele and Pendles were planning on playing this year, but there might be a few more now. Yeah, well, there's going to be a lot of questions asked if it continues to fall down this trend, that's for sure. Um, I, I made a note here just quickly before we start to move on from this St. Kilda game, even though I'm sure Derek would like us to talk about it for the next well done, hour. Derek. He'll be up and about. I'm surprised he hasn't actually come on with his St. Kilda oh, game. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is the first time that Fly actually got selection correct this year, and that's, again, a little bit disappointing saying it itself because you, you felt you had so much trust in the coaching staff last year with selections. I mean, we, we all know what happened with John Noble, but um, apart from that particular case, bringing Frampton and McInnes in seemed to have improved the side with their their want and for the football and their ability to, to try and get us back to the way we've been playing over the last couple of years. So... It's great to see those two as positives, but um, the makeup of our side over the next two weeks, I think is going to be a massive watch because we're, touch wood, relatively healthy. Our two main injuries are long-term at the moment, so it's not like there's going to be any changes, uh, any forced changes anytime soon. So Mm. are you as intrigued as I am about what the makeup of our 23 is going to be if results continue to trend this way over the next fortnight? Yes, certainly. I think it's a different conversation that anyone once again thought they'd be having. If I was very open from the beginning of the season, we don't know what the best forward line mix looks like in particular with Lockie Schultz coming in, Dan McStay going out. Completely fair enough. And obviously with Murph, that's thrown a spanner in the works too. But it kind of moves from a conversation with such a healthy list from what is our best playing group on the park for a given match day to how are we going to win week to week to stay in the hunt? Because Mm. 
if we get up to round five, round six, Nico, with only one win, two wins on the board, all of a sudden our season becomes yep. a, a really difficult uphill battle to stay in touch. So absolutely fascinated. And I think whilst personnel is important always, there's something about our DNA that's not quite right yep. at the moment. And so regardless of who comes in, who goes out, players need to start building that connection, as you mentioned, off the top to really regain some momentum. So do you think it is mental? Because we heard a lot of talk in the off season about going back to work and having the hunger to go back to back. Mm. But at the moment, that's all it is, all talk. Do well, you think it is a little mental? Uh, I haven't got a read on it once again. I, I think some of the factors we've just discussed are definitely contributing in terms of other teams working out the game style. Yes, that becomes a little bit psychological. Mm. We do look flat-footed. I mean, we're, we're covering the park and apparently we're as fit as we've ever been coming into a season, but that's not translating to the sort of intensity and game plan that you would hope for. So I don't know what the split is in terms of psychological, physical <laughs> at the moment, Nico. Have you got a view no idea because on what's going on? It, it just it's dumbfounded me. A little bit because again, it's almost like it is a completely different team going onto the park. I mentioned last week with Luke, 12 months ago after that Geelong win in round one, I was saying we, we could have gone for another eight, 12 quarters. It just looked so fit yep. and so hungry. It didn't seem the case after half time. I mean, no. I, I tweeted out a stat that we've conceded 14 goals to three in third quarters this year alone. Yep, that is, that's a massive discrepancy. And third quarters haven't been our strong suit anyway over the last couple of years but mm. it had never been this bad and and they cost you games for sure and i'm glad you've brought that stat up i didn't know the exact numbers but you could just tell coming out of the half time break we yeah. haven't looked nowhere near it and so yes we were coming back from big margins but clearly whatever we were doing to harness the the ability to win games and close ones off a deficit that's gone yeah. and i think yeah part of working out our game plan Feeds into that, but it's there's still there's almost like uh, a lethargy about the team. You know, we look tired in the second half in particular, and I'm not used to seeing that from a side that's um, very well conditioned. And I still feel like we are, but for whatever reason, yeah. when guys aren't playing for each other and making silly mistakes and missing shots on goal, it just proliferates through the team. And three weeks in a row of that makes it harder to come back. Yeah, it really does. Um, anything else to come out of Thursday night? Oh, look, I think we can leave it there for now, to be honest. I feel as if what we've seen is what we've yep. seen. And, and while it hurt, um, I, look, just a quick shout out. I hope um, Mason Wood's okay after yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. After yeah. that hit, um, that was massive. And seeing that in real time. Um, yeah, Scary, just, wasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. When a guy gets up that, it was, it was sort of like Jeremy Howe against mm. the Cats last year, to be yeah. honest. It had sort of that feeling about it. So, um, yeah, best wishes to, to Wood. And Max King challenging his one-week suspension that he copped. On Thursday for his little little elbow. So see how that one plays out. Um, What were your votes then from the weekend or Thursday night, as we should say? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll grab the fans for you shortly, but keen to see where you lent. Yeah, I thought Josh Dacos played the wing very well. He was very wide throughout the match, but continued to try and create. So has got my three votes. Two votes goes to Darcy Cameron. I thought he got Mm. across the ground and saved us a few times intercepting, but... Once again, needs to work harder to get in the right spots for the ball. And one vote, Billy Frampton, as I said off the top, probably one of his better games for the club. And I, I will disagree. I think his grand final performance was his oh, best right, ever, Nico, because walked away with the uh, that's very true. biggest prize in footy. So. Well, you have to deal with Fly for that because yeah. that's exactly what he said. Um, Josh Dacos, agree, three votes. Um, yeah, I thought he was trying. You could see he was trying to get things moving. A nice spearing ball inside to find Darcy Cameron in the corridor as well. That was a great kick, one of our better ones for tonight. And it's crazy to say that when you've been so poor by foot, to have a single moment like that stand out as one of your best kicks of the night says a lot Mm. about how you're going. But he gets the three. He had 720 metres gained as well. Um, So he was very effective with his disposal use. Um, Two votes I gave to Billy Frampton. We, We mentioned it before. He had 10 intercept possessions along with his six marks. And, um, we also mentioned Reef, who gets the one uh, for his three-goal performance. Jamie Elliott, stiff. I thought he uh, was definitely yep. a bit of a workhorse inside Ford 50 and ended up with a few goals as a reward. Um, Darcy Cameron, very stiff. I've given him votes in the last couple of weeks. I reckon his first three weeks to start the year have been outstanding. He's actually getting on the score sheet as well. He kicked five goals for us last year. He's already got four to start the season. Mm. So fantastic to see him playing so well. 
five contested marks of his six and 10 contested disposals of his 13. So shout out to DC. Um, continuing to do really well. Looking at the fans and how they voted, Josh Dacos on top as well. Uh, Billy Frampton, Pat Lipinski snuck into third spot with the majority of the fans. He's also had a pretty nice start to the campaign. McInnes, Elliot Cameron all involved. McCreary, Nick Dacos, Braden Maynard, and Mason Cox rounding out the top 10 from round two. And now Nick Dacos's lead at the top is just one vote ahead of Darcy Cameron, Josh Dacos in third, Pat Lipinski, Bo McCreary and Braden Maynard all in equal fourth at the moment. So it's a bit tight at the top, which is good to see because after two rounds, we felt, felt that Nick Dacos with two 10-vote games was probably going to run away with it at the end just like last year, but not to be. A bit of competition, mm. which is just what we like. Um, we need to line it up a bit, Marcus, because things haven't gone our way over the last few weeks. And I'm bringing this segment up a little bit earlier because I don't know if you heard, but we had a, a great old time trying to get – Molly on Guess the Crowd last week with a lot of technical issues and she could hear us and then we couldn't hear her and we could hear her and then we were just, it was just, as you would expect with the start we've had from a Collingwood point of view, Guess the Crowd has had a very faulty start at the moment. But we're going to rectify it. We are absolutely going to rectify it because I reckon, and what's exciting me more is, is like you said, Marcus, we, we got new questions this year. I'm keen to see some of the prompts that you're going to give to our listeners. So this is against the crowd. We're bringing it up a little bit early um, and we're looking forward to have a, a pretty good chat with Dave, who was our closest in the end. 69... I thought you were about to say we're getting Molly back on. No, no, we will get Molly back on. That is for sure. Uh, we're going to try because <laughs> so tried it for a third time. But um, Dave is who we've got this time around. Um, the crowd was 69,500, which for a Saints home game is not too bad. Thursday night footy. Wasn't, Decent. wasn't expecting that much. Of course, Spud's game as well around that time too, so that's very important. So we're going to make this as seamless as possible. Let's try and see how this plays building out. it up. Let's grab the headphones on. I'm confident that this is going to be the week. We're into our fifth episode in our third attempt of doing Guest the Crowd. I reckon we're able to make this work. So Dave is the one we are going to chat to, and we're going to give him a call now, and we're going to see... Just how this segment should play out. Go Pies. Go Pies, Dave. Thanks for joining us as part of the Guest of Crowd competition. Glad you were pumped and ready to go straight away for us. Thank you so much, mate. And um, no. yeah, glad you're on. No worries. How are you, boys? Yeah, look, could be better, to be honest. Yeah. A 0 three start doesn't really help your mood, but look. Particularly after round two. Well, exactly right. It's made it even worse, really. But look, I think if we remind ourselves often enough that we're the reigning premiers, Dave, I reckon we'll be uh, halfway there. So we'll see how it all plays out. Now, give us your thoughts over the first few weeks of the season right off the top because um, we've just been speaking about our loss to the Saints for the last little bit but um, do you think there's some mental challenges that we need to try to get across or do you think these are pretty fixable things as we look towards um, getting our first win of the year? Oh, I reckon they're fixable. It's feel like it feels like we've forgotten how to play the game. Mm. Like we've forgotten how to kick over the man on the mark and we've forgotten how to nail a hand handball in the back line like our captain's doing it and our former captain's doing it and some of our senior players are all doing it so i mean they're not they're not just shit overnight are they no so um they'll they'll come good and then then once it's once we're on once we're on very good dave marcus here thank you for joining us just wanted to tap a little bit deeper into where you think we might be going to wrong. We, we've discussed different lines. I'm going to try not to pick out individual players, but is there somewhere where it's beginning for you that you believe we're starting to break down or is it just throughout the team? Well, it's pretty much throughout. The back line for me seems like the most obvious because, I mean, they score goals. Well, I, I, didn't see the, I didn't see the GWS game, but I was at the Sydney game. Mm -hmm. And I watched the St Kilda game. The Sydney game was just farcical how how bad we were just handballing it in the back line and then like players running on and kicking goals right in front of us. And um, I mean, our forward line's not functioning either, but it hasn't always anyway. We've never had a, a great forward line. Mm. You know, different players pop up and kick some goals every now and then, but I wouldn't say we're dominant as a, as a forward group anyway. 
Mm-hmm. No. And so we're winning not. and we're winning clearances. So the midfield's doing all right. But we're just not getting it done. Mm. So it's a question we sort of posed over the last couple of weeks and I guess it's disappointing that we keep having to posing it, but looking ahead to Brisbane on Thursday night, Dave, if, if there's one aspect of our game that you want to see try and be rectified as quickly as possible, what, what do you feel like needs to be prioritised from our coaching staff this week? Fundamental skills and hunger. Yes. And also maybe maybe have a bit more fun again. They don't look like they're coming out and laughing and, you know, all that stuff that they were doing and really building on last year. I mean, it was easy when they were winning. but. I feel like I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the pressure. Maybe maybe it's the pressure of being the hunted. But um, I feel like our our old boys need to step up. I think Finn McRae needs to be in the guts from the start. Mm. And I feel like maybe maybe side bottom needs to come out. Yeah, which is really harsh. Big call. Because he because he you know he won us the grand final last year. But I feel like he's getting a lot of the ball, but he's not doing very good things with it when he gets it. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see Noble back in with a bit of speed. Yeah. And I'd like to see Markov get more of it. Maybe Markov comes out as the sub and put Noble in. I don't know. It's a tough one. I'd hate to be the coaches. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely not a position that we would like to be in either at the moment, Dave. But switching switching gears to the other side of why we like to get the fans on, just love to know a little bit about your routine when you go to the footy, where do you sit? Is there anything you like to do before the match just to satisfy any superstitions or the like, or you just get there, rock up and bounce the ball umpire? No, plenty of superstitions. Um, we, we often go to, we go to beer deluxe beforehand. Yes. Um, and try and drink a pink beer if we can, because, um, back in 2018, back in 2018, when we sort of didn't expect to make the grand final that year, Someone drank a pink beer at Beer Deluxe, and so from then on, we've always had to have one. Now, now, Dave, just before you go any further, you'll have to enlighten me. What is a pink beer? Oh, any beer that's pink. So I Simple think it was that. like a it was like a raspberry sour beer or something like that. Right. You know, okay, these, okay, all these craft right. beers and stuff. Beautiful. Please continue. So, whatever they have, um, I usually I, I do. I have a little betting syndicate with a few mates. Um, gamble responsibly. Where we, you know, we, yep. we, we gamble responsibly. Um, we 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 lose we lose about five dollars every week. Um, but I like to put down a, a bingo, a bingo yes. card for, mm. you know, for the players that you think. So, you know, like Monica's going to kick two goals and get 20 disposals or, you know, checkers will kick the first goal or, yeah, right. you know, so we have a little, a little bingo card for, for, for what we want to see in the, in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then we, we normally sit, oh, we move it around really often, you know, sort of, on the boundary line, like on the um, the fifty meter line, yep, level one sort yep. of thing. Beautiful. I'm glad I asked. Yeah. This is a fantastic response, Nico. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So one that our fans can expect to um, try and answer when they get on. One thing, one more question I want to ask you, Dave. It's been great having yep. you on our pod. Um, a new question I'm going to bring to the table, Marcus. Seeing as I don't know if you've heard, we did win a flag last year. Just in case anybody was wondering, yes, yes. tell us your 2023 premiership story. Where were you? Were you at the game watching it? Were you around family and friends? Tell us how you saw history unfold last year. All right. Well, I wasn't at the game. We didn't try to get tickets this time. I've I've seen us lose too many grand finals. And I've only seen <laughs> right us win once. Um, and I've, I've been a lot to them before, so I thought I'll let someone else get the ticket this time. So we went to the AI Centre um, with 30,000-odd other Pies fans, which the vibe in there was great. I would do that again. Mm. Um, but I was down in the Mornings Peninsula that week uh, with my family and then we got, you know, we got in uh, after the prelim and I had to start organising what I was going to do. So I jumped on a bus from Dramana that went to Frankston at about eight o'clock in the morning wow. and there were, you know, yep. uh, old boys drinking warm white wine out of bottles on the on the bus there. And, Standard. Yeah, really sort of giving it to me because I was Drink all decked out in my pies gear, drink responsibly on the bus at eight o'clock in the morning. Um Got on the train, finally, after about, you know, two and a half, three hours to get into the city, we got there and we got in amongst it and sat in the blaring sun with all the other Pies fans as they came in um, with some old friends that I always go to the footy with. And 
yeah, we watched, you know, a pretty amazing game. Mm. Uh, when we were when Charlie Cameron kicked that goal in the last quarter and I think put them up by a little bit. Yep. I t- turned around to the people behind me, like, how are we all feeling? Yes. <laughs> like, you know, looking pretty – but I, I was pretty confident we were going to win. You know, it felt like everything was going all right. The ball was bouncing the right way, yep. like in 2010. That's it. Um, That's it. But yeah, and then just celebrated into the night. I don't know what I did after that. Sung the song a lot. I reckon <laughs> I watched it twice at the pub afterwards. How oh, good. As per. As per. Yeah. Exactly right. Night, really. Well, thank you for not going so that one of us could get tickets to go and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> good Samaritan. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, play um, it forward, you know. That's exactly right. No, Dave, it's me. Great having you on this week's episode. Thank you for sharing some of your stories. And hopefully we start to see a few more wins on the board in 2024. Oh, we, we will win this weekend, guys. It's we all right. We will. Certainty from Dave right there. Yep. We are winning it this week. Thanks so much for coming on. Good on you, Dave. No worries. Love the show, guys. See ya. Thank right. you. And that is how you do a perfect guest the crowd segment, I would have thought. So thanks to Dave. Yeah, to anyone who gets it right and is looking for some preparation, Dave's interview there, sensational. And new questions, Nico? Yeah, I didn't mind them. I thought I thought your one was pretty good. Yeah, this came off the top. So yeah, perfect. No, that's game it. game rituals and flag stories. We Absolutely. can work with that. Perfect. So that's guest the crowd. So that's how you can get involved. That could be you joining us on an episode of Pies Nation podcast again this year. So keep an eye out for the post that Lukey does on the way uh, in the lead up to our games every week. And then you guess the crowd closest to the pin. And that will be you joining us on the phone. It's part of an episode. I reckon this year might be the year, Marcus, that we get someone spot on. You reckon? I really do. Okay. I really do. So I don't. Keep guessing. No? Okay. That's all right. Well, I'm playing the probabilities. <laughs> Unless we have an up an upswing of you know another fifty thousand followers on the Instagram page, then we can every, start talking. If every person guessed one number if every between calling would zero support, uh, and a hundred thousand, eventually someone participated. Would, yeah, perhaps, that's a good, perhaps. That's a good point. Um, so that was a nice little light segment. I would have thought it was great to you know get it the reflect on the glory days. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and now we can take us back because we got asked by nation. <laughs> so be sure to get involved in all our social media pages: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Uh, Twitter, uh, TikTok, I think I've said them all, um, and just continue there yeah, to get involved. Subscription links have started to go out, so head to the link tree on our Instagram page, on our Twitter page. Subscriptions are starting to pile in. New content from next week, so be sure to get involved and subscribe. It helps us and keeps our show running, but also you get the reward of some extra content too. So keep an eye on our socials. Be sure to get involved. Just $5 a month, Marcus. It's a pretty good deal, I would have thought. And how much for the year? If you just $42. Stump up. 12 months of the year. Support the team. Can't get better than that, I would have thought. So be sure to get involved with our subscription. But this is Ask Pies Nation, and everybody gets involved in Ask Pies Nation. We thank everybody for their answers throughout the week. So it was very hard to pick a few of the best ones, but we're going to do our best, and, and hopefully we'll see a bit of a trend from our fans. And maybe the, the people that be, might be that, nah, the people at power are listening to these answers from the fans. Let the people speak. That's Nick. what I was meant to Let say. The people I speak. couldn't get that out, but you're right. All right, let's go to Sam on Instagram to kick things off. Teams have studied our style closely and can predict where we are going. How many times have we had short kicks and handballs intercepted leading directly to goals conceded already this season? We have become predictable. There's an element of mm. truth in that, and you become predictable when you turn the ball over. There's no doubt about that. Mm. I think – and. What I find interesting, they are very shallow turnovers. They're not deep turnovers where we're going from one arc to the other. They're, they're pretty short kicks, as was just mentioned there by Sam. They were, they're short handballs. Like we short handballs in the, the corridor. The yep. yep. So um, that's probably what's hurting us the most. We used to turn it over last year, but not to the level we are right no. now. No. Uh, Maria on Instagram, I feel like it's to do with the attitude of their players or their mindset. Players just don't seem as interested or as hungry when they've been playing. I feel like if Fly can get the players more motivated and energetic, then we should be back to what we do best in no time. I just feel like we haven't been putting as much pressure on the opposition as we have the last two years, and that's what's killing us. And that was the point I was making about our tackles inside 50. Four mm. tackles inside 50 in six and a half quarters of football is, is disgraceful, really. Yeah, and one on the weekend, I believe, as yep. well. So, yeah, absolutely. Shay on Twitter, it feels like the very definition of a premiership hangover. They spent two years absolutely battling and winning all those close games to reach the ultimate prize. I know they keep saying they're not done, but clearly... 
the hunger, drive, and intensity is not there anymore. And this is where it gets so interesting about the psychology of footy and the hunted. Well, what we were the hunted now we're the hunters mm. again in almost less than a month of footy, Nico. And so sustaining that level of standards and being able to perform is so, so difficult, even if your team is apparently fit and firing and healthy. So some validity in these points. Yeah. And I think what's also been frustrating to watch is we've stopped putting our bodies on the line, producing those one percenters. It's safe. Happening far too few compared to mm. what we've seen in previous years as well. Um, John on Twitter, hopefully someone has this stat. When was the last time the premiership team played the first four games of the season against four finalists, then four games in 19 days with six-day breaks and with the shortest preseason. Maybe the answers lie in some of that. For sure. And once again, I know the coaches will say the shorter, slightly shorter break over summer doesn't play into it, but good pick up there in terms of the short mm. turnarounds consecutively, bit of interstate travel, even though we like to say we travel well. So again, we're not going to put our finger on it, but I think we're just bringing to surface some of the potential contributing factors and that was well put. Yeah. Again, the fixture topics brought up here by MJ Cara on Twitter. We'd still be in practice match mode most other years, yet we're about to play our fourth game for actual points in four days, a week out from April. Will come good, but might be too late if no wins are banked early. The fixture doing the pies no favours either. I, I get the point. Mm. Yes, the fixture's tough and should be. Rolling is opening round, but that's that's my point. Yeah. We, we've won the flag, man. We we can't be expecting to roll up and play North West Coast in the first couple of weeks of the season and think everything's great. We, yeah. We're going to get the tough teams early, so it's just something we have to work harder to try and get get through. Do we have a stretch later in the season where we play at the G? Week we after week, because we I do. feel like that's one thing that might fall into favour if we need to time our run very late, just to uh, try and chalk up some momentum. I believe, and I can double check later, I think we might only have one interstate game in our last eight or nine. Yeah, and right. Most of them are at the G. So. Yeah, we might, we might need that. Um, Donna on Facebook, just wondering if the new rules regarding head high bumps are starting to affect teams. Collingwood probably still feel it most after the uproar regarding Maynard and Brayshaw's incident. The lack of going in hard for the ball, I have noticed, has started to be a huge issue at the moment. We look a little scared to put our body on the line for the ball. They're possibly a bit tired as well, which isn't good for the start of the season. It's only going to get harder. Hopefully, they'll remedy this slump ASAP. I'm not sure about the head high contact thing playing into our want and our fight, but certainly it's a byproduct, what we're seeing, of not going with intent at the footy and not seeing your teammates do mm. inspirational acts, Nico. I think yeah. that's mother from Lockie Schultz in the final term on the weekend. It was, was probably the only one. The really. only one where you go, yes, like that was unbelievable. And we saw those sorts of acts quarter by quarter last season and the season before it. So, mm. yeah, I think that's probably more where it's coming from. Yeah, the lack of desperation right now mm. is um, pretty telling at the moment. Russell on Facebook, I still think we're doing okay. Defenders obviously need to get their confidence back. Still lacking that ferocious run off half back and our forwards need to give our mids and half backs more options. We were much better against the Saints and we're finally getting back to ourselves. Reef was fantastic, but Finn needs a full game and I think we need to bring Carmichael in as well. Wouldn't hurt to bring back Noble and possibly drop a couple of the veterans for a week, even if it is this week against the Lions. Oh, very contentious. Yes. Purely Absolutely. because I think if there's a game this season before the bye that we're going to need our leaders to step up. It's this week because let's be real, zero and four, that that just doesn't work no. in the mind for me as a fan and I'm sure as a player. That would feel like you're climbing an absolute mountain for the rest of the season. So against the team that we beat in the granny last mm. year, I, I can't see us dropping some yeah, of our Yeah, probably not yet. We've got a buy to come up as well in a couple in the of buy. weeks. So. Yeah, strange start. We'll finish off with Lucas on Twitter. Uh, many people here thought we'd be 5-0 and oh or 4-1. and one. I thought 2-3, and three, a real possibility, and now even that's mm. pushing it. We overrated our team and so did our players. Might be hard getting it working this season, but just watch the Cats, watch the cats this year and how they've updated from 2023 lessons. They've started really well, Geelong, and maybe there's something mm. there. Oh, for sure. I think that whatever the Cats are navigating at the moment is clearly – having had time to reflect on what didn't go well and really have more time to put into practice so that they didn't have another start like we have, zero and three, I think two years in a row from the 
previous grand finalists. The Cats yeah. starting poorly last season as well. I so, think they went 0-4. Is that right? Geelong, we'll double from check memory. that. But either way, it's not a position you want to find yourself in. And I still think that we're a high caliber side. I really do. And I, and I don't think it's reason yet to start pointing to the fact that we don't have the game plan or the, or the personnel to get mm. a good season out of this year. But certainly there's still some real considerations as we've discussed over the next three to five years about replenishing our list. And I think the cats are probably in life after Selwood. We've got life after Pendlebury coming up, unfortunately. And this is something that we're going to have to consider. And it all starts with finding new guns from probably last year to start replacing them. And as that next wave of mature players comes through, then we're keeping that list and that window open. Well, VFL report just around the corner, so there might be a few names there mm-hmm. as well. I'm actually going to finish with one more, and it's going to be our friend Peter Wood from Dallas, America, who's actually been in Australia for the last few weeks, and he wrote in to say that I'm back in Dallas after going 0-3, so maybe my venue change will bring us a bit of luck. So he came out from the States, yes. and we lost all the games We've lost all the games he's been here for. So After a flag. Yeah. Sorry about that, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry, you've watched us on TV overseas. Thinking... What's what, what's the story there? He's got us. He's got us um, in with the the American so AFL. I'd have to double check because Luke's States. got the backstory to it. Um, but yeah. he's from yeah. He's got people from Dallas and Houston that love the show. Yeah. So shout out to all those listening. It's great to have you on. Um, and I believe. If um, he said something along the lines of if if we ever if we ever come across Dallas, just by any chance, one day, Nico. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, and we can go for a barbecue, man. And we're being so. chaperoned around the world, for exactly. talking all things Collingwood. Absolutely, it's coming. On. Get involved. All right. Well, that was Ask Pies Nation. Thanks all those for commenting through their thoughts. We always like to get through as many as we can. So. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify for podcasts, TikTok, absolutely everywhere you can find us. You can continue to get involved with all those conversations. So um, hopefully some more positive topics to discuss in the weeks to come. But let's move to the return of a very popular segment, and that is the VFL Report, which I know a lot of our fans love listening to. And we always like getting the the introduction from Marcus before the the. Big, big wrap up from our good mate, Serge, who's back on board this year, Marcus, helping us out with our VFL report. So it was a good win for the Pies in the end, 28 points over Sandringham. So at least something to smile about from the weekend. Indeed, Nico, and a host of AFL listed players putting their hands up. And we talk about healthy competition for spots, but gee whiz, if our run of losses continues, some of these blokes are going to be coming in because they're forcing others Mm. out due to their strong VFL performances. And one straight off the top that comes to mind, we talked about him at the start of the season with high raps after he's finally got his shot on an AFL list, and that's Lockie Sullivan, Nico. Huge. I'm sure we'll hear more about him, but I tell you what, if I was a Tommy Mitchell or even a Finn McRae, Lockie Sullivan's a guy who can get his snout in the trough and win ball in the middle. So I won't take up any more of Serge's time, <laughs> but we did get the job done, 83-55, and... Looking forward to hearing what the great man has to say about the match. Our first game, first Collingwood men's game at Moorabbin since the early 90s. So there's a little one for you. There you go. Um, Serge, back into it. He gave me a very extensive um, uh, review, as you could Always. imagine. I won't go through all of it, but I'll take some of the, the key notes from it. Executive summary. Despite being 30 points down 15 minutes into the first quarter, geez, that's, that's a, bit, a bit surprising. Uh, the Pies, um, through excellent around the ground tackling pressure, run and carry, were able to take back the lead by 15 points at halftime and were never headed again. Pies looked more polished and they ran out comfortable winners was a solid performance across the ground and the connection between the backs, mids and forwards was very good for the majority of the game. Good to know. In the end, our second and third quarter efforts ensured we were in a winning position going into the final term. A great spread of goal kickers and some exciting performances from our young AFL pies. Noble, clear best, 29 disposals. Sullivan, 28. Jack Bytel, 24. Ed Allen, 24. Um, And Carmichael with 20. Uh, Richards kicked three goals, Glover two, singles to Johnson, Harrison, Purcell, Wilson, Hutchison, and Kennedy. Aiden Begg battled hard all day, but was instrumental in the centre clearances along with Lockie Sullivan. So there's your wrap-up from Serge, and looking forward to having him do those for us again throughout the year. So a nice start for our VFL team, and I'll tell you what, I hope the coaches 
Um, group coaching groups been looking out for that one because I know it's only one game, but there's a lot of positive signs that come out of that one. Being John Noble particularly with a strong showing as he looks to try and get himself back into the side. You already mentioned Lockie Sullivan, who I thought um, was really strong too in that game. So good signs and looking forward to seeing if they can continue that. Where are our VFL boys playing in this? Yeah, they'll fly. They'll be off to the um, play Brizzy yep. VFL side. So is he in Surge up in Queensland? Yeah, yeah, Queensland. Yeah, okay. so he could get there live Friday afternoon style. Might be the case, yeah. So 12.05 if you're um, really keen getting onto Ipswich. <laughs> Lovely. Nico. Yeah. So right. that's where we play this week. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see how that one all plays. A bit of good Friday footy for you up in the north. VFLW also got underway on the weekend, but unfortunately the Pies went down to the Saints on this occasion. Eight points in the end was... The final margin, uh, we were trying to peg it back in that second half, but just were unable to take the lead at any stage of the match. And we start, unfortunately, 0-1. We've got Port Melbourne at ETU Stadium. So a bit more Good Friday football for you this weekend for the Pies. Um, so that take on Port Melbourne there. So there's your VFL wrap. And I reckon a lot of those names will be getting a bit of mention in the early weeks of the VFL season, which is always great to see. But we push on. Said so the VFL boys were up against the Lions on Friday. Well, we've got the Lions on Thursday night at the Gabba. Brisbane, incredibly, 0-2 coming into this clash. They had the bye on the weekend, so they'll be refreshed and ready to go. You would think a really disappointing performance against Fremantle in round one after they started really well, mm. kicked the first four goals and just were unable to find that spark since. Although I must admit the Dockers have been very impressive as well to start the year, but that's for another day. Um, I think the big takeaway from the first couple of weeks is that when the pressure was on Brisbane, they faltered really quickly. So, yes, the Lions could start really well in games, but as soon as those tables were turned, they just couldn't find the way out. Very similar to how we're playing mm. our football at the moment. But with our oppositions producing a lot of one percenters and, and a hunger for the football, um, we get found out pretty quickly if we can't emulate to their level. And right now, that's where Brisbane are at the moment. So it could be a bit more of an even contest than we first thought. Yeah, for sure. And I think overall, they are pretty healthy as well as you would hope this early into the season. Kitty Coleman coming out of the side is obviously a huge omission based on how much he cut us up, not only in the grand final, yeah. but when we played them throughout the season. So he's one that I think really changes the shape of their team. And thank God that we don't have to worry about his presence or wishing the best with his recovery. But he's just, yeah, fantastic quarterback style defender. So. He's one less to worry about. But on the whole, you would hope that despite our short breaks and going in without the bye, that we're there to show everyone why we are the reigning premier and doing that on their deck is going to be no easy feat, Nico. It's probably the toughest assignment mm. in footy at the moment. And we've got our work cut out. We absolutely do. But we've seen time and time again, games like this back against the wall. Yep. We just show up and, and manage to get the job done. So I'm not saying it's going to happen. A lot has going to have to improve in a week of footy for us to be in contention late into the game. But how do you see this one playing out in terms of the key matchups on the ground? I know Tom Dode's a chance yeah, to get back in. Yeah, a good chance, I reckon, to play his first and game And that could Lions. cause some headaches for us on top of uh, uh, Harris Andrews as well. So... Mm. Intriguing, intriguing to see where are, players will start. Yeah, they are a little bit undermanned in that back line. You mentioned Coleman, no Connor McKenna either. Mm. Um, and I don't think Darcy Gardner is going to get up at this stage. He could, uh, but as we're recording, he's probably not. So Lockie Neal comes back in, you would think, after resting against the Dockers. And then, as we said, Tom Duday is probably making his way for his first game for the Lions. So, yes, that's going to put a lot more pressure on our forwards to act. I think this is where we can be really handy at ground level again. So we've missed mm. the pressure inside 50. Well, let's start piling it on because we, I just said with Brisbane, they haven't been able to find a way through when the pressure's on them. So our small forwards could really combine and create some great work. It's a smaller ground, the Gabba, we yep. know that. So. This is where a Bobby Hill and a Jamie Elliott can really thrive potentially. Even Bo McCrew, I think he'll be licking his lips at some of those tall defenders if so. they don't get their hands on the footy early. So hopefully that's where that connection can start to build a little bit. And I'm really looking forward to that. At the other end of the ground, you look at Danaher and you look at Hipwood, who are really good at taking strong contested marks inside 50 and almost from 
any distance, 60 metres inwards, that they're making the distance with their shots at goal. So something we have to be really careful at. Um, again, the midfield is always going to be fascinating. With with Neil back this week, we might have to put a little bit of attention into him, of course, reigning Brownlee medalist for a reason. But here's the Tom Mitchell redemption game. Oh. I think this is the match where he can really fire you only have to look at the grand final as a prime example of how instrumental he can be in those situations. If you can start winning those contested possessions and clearances a lot more and have a bit of a say in the contest early, well, it could go a long way towards us winning this game. The Lions were minus 19 in scores from stoppages against Fremantle, so it is an area we can try and capitalize on if we get things right. Bit of pressure on the goalie who's had a bit of a few quiet yeah, weeks, and absolutely. Well, if, if the goalie and Mitchell can can work together to try and uh, get a bit of a, a bull like instinct in there, potentially that's where we can start to power through, and the pressure's not as high on our midfield and defensive group. Yeah, for sure. I think that guys like Jack Crisp and Tom Mitchell will need to yep. play a defensive style of game. Wouldn't mind seeing Crispy go to McCluggage mm. at okay. parts throughout the match, even though Hugh McCluggage is one of my favourite footballers. So that's going to be massive. Another really, really interesting aspect of this game in terms of selection and, and starting lineups I wanted to discuss yep. with you is do we start Jeremy Howe Ford and Billy Frampton in defence? Mm. Or do we stick fat with what we've done? Because the reason I say this is that while we do need to consider small forwards in our mix on a fast gabbard deck, I'm just not seeing enough movement forward of the ball. And Howie, for me, has been a swing man that we can rely upon later in games. But are you in agreement with me that we aren't getting enough representation in terms of lead up forwards oh, certainly, from yeah. the taller guys yep. earlier in matches. And I think that's leading to stagnation across the park. And then we're having to chase our tail from there on. So I know it seems like a bit of a rogue move, but I hope that if he doesn't start in the forward line, Howie this is, that Fly moves him sooner in the match. Because we're just seeing too much of the same old stuff at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. And you, ne- you need shape to, to maintain a good forward presence. Well, we just heard from one of our fans in Ask Pies Nation, we're being too predictable. So maybe we do see Jeremy Howe go in there a lot earlier than maybe Chris Fagan is expecting, and he might have to move the magnets a little more. So Are you're you right. against it? Or? I, I, I agree. There's certainly no lead-ups at all. I, I was just telling you how much I was yelling at the MCG on Thursday yeah. night for people to move, move, and that wasn't actually happening. So yeah, I think if if that's going to, to play around a little bit and, and there's not much space at the Gabba compared to at the MCG. So it's almost forcing ourselves to try and create that space that maybe isn't there originally. I just I just don't understand how you can take Billy Frampton out of no, defence after no. one of his best no games for the club in defence. Not with Hipwood and Danaher there yeah. and, and and them being two players that can tear a game apart. So yep. no, certainly not. Um, in terms of other selection changes, are you, are you looking anywhere else? Now, Hoskin Elliott was rested. Oh, managed, sorry, I should say, last week. Nice and too. I was thinking about it over the last couple of days because you think, oh, yeah, he'll probably squeeze in. Oh, I don't know who he comes in for. You're probably not taking him out for Tom Mitchell considering the, the aspects of, of the game mm. he needs to play and what we just mentioned. Look, is, there, is is Sidebottom a real possibility to not play this week? Because I, I can't believe that just yet. I don't think he's warranted nah, it. Nah, th- look, honestly, I think... Given he got subbed out of the game, Leggy is probably a bit more vulnerable than someone like Steel Sidebottom. I reckon you need your leaders out there mm. against the Lions, even though Steel had one of the strangest games of footy we'll ever see. Won't go there. But in terms of Markov and Hoskin Elliott, there is a bit of tit for tat there in terms of position. But I just don't know if Noble comes in that was a- my- ahead of those two. Really? Hey, hey? You don't think Noble should be in ahead of Markov and Hoskin Elliott at this point in time? I think that Hoskin Elliott gives us so much glue at the moment in the role that he's been playing as that sort of halfback defensive winger. And we missed him on the weekend. Yeah. You know, like that guy who can just get across and put a fist in. And yeah, there's plenty of, there's plenty of, again, guys who would be vying for selection. But I just, for that role, I can't think about keeping our experienced heads out of the game when we're coming up against the side that we just beat in the granny. Yeah, that's a fair point. I still think there needs to be room for Noble into this team. And, and unfortunately, I agree that Hoskin has to come back into this side, no doubt. But if if we can't fit him in along with Noble, I feel like John Noble has to play, especially on, on a speedy Gabba deck, as you just mentioned before, Marcus. He, he's playing great football, I feel like, in the VFL. It will be only one game. Showed enough 
as a sub in opening round, in my opinion, to suggest that he should be playing regular football in our best 23. You talk about someone that's got hunger and motivation to come back and be a better footballer. He'd be spewing still that he wasn't in that premiership team last year. We're not seeing that at the moment right now. So again, from the outside looking in, it might be a simple swap where it's where it is Noble coming in for Markov. Unfortunately, if that means Hoskin Elliott misses another week, so be it. But in my opinion, Noble cannot miss again this week. If that happens, as stiff as it sounds, I think that probably Finn McRae comes out for Noble. Maybe. But once again, the thing about Johnny Noble is that while he has been trialed on the wing earlier in his career, he's a halfback back pocket. Yep. You know, he, ne- he needs to be rebounding out of defence. Yeah, but see, this is where Chris can come in and play a bit more of a role in the cluggage on the wing. Or Yeah, yeah, and through the guts as well. I just feel like Hoskin Elliott gives you a little bit more flexibility mm. between the arcs, but Nobes, to your point, does, based on form, deserve a crack yep. um, sooner rather than later. So it'll be it'll be fascinating selection. Yeah, that's exactly the word. It will be an interesting watch come Wednesday night. One more question before we move on to our tips. Are we a better team when we're an underdog as we are in this situation? Having not won a game, mm. we're going over to Brisbane, who, of course, we beat in the grand final last year, but they're at the Gabba. They rarely lose there. Do you feel like we come alive and go an extra level when that's the case, or are the backs not against the wall too much yet to start playing that game? It's a really strange position that we're in, aren't we? It's mm. almost as if we're still the reigning premier, and that is recent enough in the memory <laughs> particularly being highlighted against playing the Lions. But then based on our win-loss, it sort of feels as if we are taking on that mantle mm. very quickly in terms of proving people wrong. And yeah. I think there's one thing about footy is that everyone loves an underdog, except if it's Collingwood. But in this instance, yeah, absolutely we are. Yeah. We are going to this game and it probably does serve us better. And hopefully Fly can use that as motivation to really rally the mm. squad because we haven't, I haven't felt that sense of urgency, but after last week's result, I'm like, shit, we are very quickly looking at a different shape to our season yeah. early on in the piece. So, Certainly. No, yep. Good call. Tip? Yep. Okay. Collingwood by four points. Four points. Okay. Wow. I wonder where you got that number from. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> stole mine. Six points. We'll win by a straight kick. It'll be some dramatic final couple of minutes. Where the ball's probably out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, let's get to your Friday headline. Friday headline. Okay, so the game's on the Thursday, Thursday. so it's a Friday headline. Yes, yes. Sure. Um, Friday headline, I'm going to go with Bobby Hill does it again with a hanger over Stasevich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. I don't mind that. Good. It's on your. T- I just saw it on your t-shirt. Your flat. It's so yeah, just, yeah. It made me think of it. Is GDA. It, yeah. This is one of our better designs. I yeah, I reckon. Um, my Friday headline. Oh yeah. See, this is tough. I think um, I'll lean towards a Tom Mitchell masterclass. He returns, plays one of his best <laughs> games for the Pies, and he leads us to a big win. Mm-hmm. Not exactly a headline, but you get the point. I think Titch has a great match, and he gets back to his best. Yep. That's what okay. we're for. All right. That's going to do then for this week's episode. Try to get some fun in there, but I know that we'll be back there soon because we've got a big game against the Lions and I'm sure we are pushing for us to get that win, that first win of 2024, and we'll see if we can do it against a tough Lions outfit. But Marcus, thanks for the rant. Thanks for the chat. And yeah. hopefully we're in better spirits next week. Thanks, Nico. One of those pods, just one yes. of those pods. Yep. You just get in, get it done and move on. I think that's exactly the way we need to look at it. Till next week, I've been your host, Nicholas Sacco. You've been listening or watching to the Pies Nation podcast where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. <laughs>